السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله إن الحمد لله سبحانه وتعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونشكره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ولا مثيل له ولا نظير له ولا ضد له ولا ند له وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وعظيمنا وقائدنا وقرة أحمدنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وفريده بعثه الله رحمة للعالمين وهاديا ومبشرا ونذيرا فبلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الأمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فجزاه الله خير ما جازى نبيا عن أمته ووفقنا وإياكم لاتباع سنته وحشرنا يوم القيامة في زمرته وجعلنا من أهل شفاعته صلى الله عليه وسلم وبارك وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعلينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا وقال تعالى فإنك لعلى خلق عظيم وفي الحديث المؤقف عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه إن قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إنما بعث لأتمم مكارم الأخلاق اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وزقنا اجتنابه وجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه وأدخل وأدخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين أما بعد Dear respected brothers and elders and sisters in Islam Today, today's talk, inshallah, is going to be around the verse of the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa taala said, "لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُو اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ." Certainly, indeed, you have an excellent model, role model in the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa taala for those who hopes to meet Allah subhanahu wa taala and believe in the last day, and those who remember Allah subhanahu wa taala abundantly. So, ulama in the in this verse is very famous, and then ulama recite this verse a lot. The mufassirin, the commentator in the commentary of this verse, they write from this word, from this verse, from this ayah, we learn that the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, knowing the knowledge of seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is not just mustahab, is not just an optional thing that we learn or we do, we do not learn or we listen to, we don't listen to it, but it's a, it's, it's a necessary thing. It's wajib upon every Muslim to learn the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they mention the rule in the fiqh which says, uh, uh, which says, مَا لَا يَتَمُّ الْوَاجِبُ إِلَّا بِهِ فَهُوَ وَاجِبٌ They say, the fuqaha say that without which an obligation cannot be fulfilled is itself an obligation. Meaning, if we do not know the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in this verse, he commanded Muslims, to know the seerah and follow the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the lifestyle life of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and if you don't know it, how are we going to follow it? So from this verse, ulama deduced that it is fard, it's wajib upon Muslims, it's a compulsory thing that we know the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as much as possible, and in the in the matters of deen, it is wajib, fard, that everyone know how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam performed salah, how he uh, performed charity, zakat, how he did hajj. This is fat upon every Muslim. So we should learn as much as possible in this regard. And in the terms of, in the matters of dunya, it is mustahab, sunnah. If we know it, we'll get sawab and we, if we act accordingly, we'll get sawab from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if we do not, then it's also mustahab we should learn from the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why when I started uh, khutbah uh, three, four weeks ago, we started from the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam interacted with the kuffar and then the next khutbah was about the munafiqeen and then how he interacted, the last khutbah was about how he, Prophet sallallahu <coughs> interacted with the uh, Ahlul Kitab, the people of the book. Today, inshallah, uh, I'm going to discuss how Prophet sallallahu interacted and treated and trained the youth of his time, how, them, how much significance he gave to them. And then it's also very important to uh, know that the, the, the background of this verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 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 said this to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was revealed uh, around the time of Ghazwa al 
uh, which is also called Ghazwatul uh, Ahzab, in which uh, 3,000 Sahaba participated uh, against 10,000 Meccans and, uh, and the Jewish against them. And then, they, uh, you know, the longest story, they dug uh, a trench, very long, and it was a very extreme condition, very uh, bad climate, very harsh climate. And they had to go through a lot of suffering and didn't have any food, nothing, and suffering a lot. So Sahaba Ajma'in came to Prophet وسلم, complaining about their situation, that they are suffering so much and then they are going through so much hardship. Do something about it. So the Prophet and what they did to prove their suffering, the Prophet, the Sahaba, uh, raised their shirts and then they would bend, uh, they would stone uh, tied to their bellies, one stone. The Prophet Qudwa, this is what Allah means from this this this, this verse, Qudwa, to show by example. So the Prophet raised his shirt and Sahaba noticed that he had two stone tied to his belly. Where the Sahaba had only one, the Prophet ﷺ had two stones tied to his belly. So he showed the Sahaba not the, not just by words, not just by his speeches, but also by example, which is very important. So then this verse was revealed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse that follow the Rasulullah, ﷺ, follow his lifestyle, he's suffering, you suffer, you know. How he's passionate, how he's being kind, how he's being gracious, how he's being uh, you know, uh, calm about the situation. So you learn from it, follow his lifestyle. He's going through a lot, so you follow him, how to uh, calm your situation, how to calm yourself. And then, uh, I will highlight some of the noble character and attitude with the youth of his time, how Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam treated them and interacted with them, and how uh, we learn from the seer that throughout his, life, his noble life, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emphasized the significance of the youth. He empowered the youth companions of his time and left behind an exemplary and extraordinary legacy that continues to inspire young people to this day. Prophet was a genius role model. Love, kindness, sympathy, empathy were the underlying factor behind his relationship with the youth. So his charisma, personality, attraction, you know, how he treated them, kindness, attractive people, you know, like young people, teenagers, Muslim, non-Muslim alike, in crowds. When he's studying the seerah, it is evident that a very large number of followers, the companions were in fact young Sahaba. A lot of them were young Sahaba. Abu Bakr Siddiq was 38 years old when he accepted Islam. But most of the people who accepted Islam were young people because as we know, the young people are attracted to message, new message, something new that is going on. They are attracted, attracted to it more than the, the, the old people because the old people are uh, mostly rigid in their thinking. So most of the Sahaba who accepted Islam were young people. And the Prophet Sallallahu very keen in instilling in them not only the faith, teaching them Iman and how Iman and strengthening their Iman so that they do not de deviate from, from a straight, the straight path, but also leading, teaching them so that they can lead others, generations to come by their own examples. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave them special glad tidings for the Shabbat, for the youth only, special glad tidings of paradise. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam developed them emotionally and spiritually, not only emotionally, spiritually and religiously. And mentioning the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said to Sahaba, special glad tidings for the youth, that seven people will be under the share of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when there will be no share. And there will be so much suffering on the day of resurrection. And one of them is Shaab al Nashafi Ibadatillah, a young man who will spend his life worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And uh, he will spend his life accordingly. So he will be under the share of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very good great tidings. He's once advising the Sahaba and saying to young people, Ittanim khamsan qabla khamsin, that take advantage of five before five. And one of them he says, Shabab qabla harami. Before you get old, take advantage of our youth. You know, do whatever you can, you know, in terms of a'mal, in terms of action, in terms of, in terms of dunya, work hard. And then another hadith he mentioned of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the significance of youth and how to spend it and be careful about it. He's saying, لَن تَزُولَ قَدَمَا عَبْدِ الْيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ حَتَّى يُسَلَ الْأَرْبَعَ عَنْ عُمْرِهِ فِي مَا أَفْنَاهُ وَعَنْ شَبَابِهِ فِي مَا أَبْلَاهُ That on the day of the resurrection, man's feet, no one will, be, will move one, one foot, one step. Before he's asked about his life, how he spent it, and, how he, and, and then about his youth, how he spent his youth, how, how he utilized his youth for the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then there's another hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaching the Sahaba, the youth, about the Iman, instilling in their hearts uh, Iman and, and Yaqeen. 
He said, it says uh, uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas, the narrator of the, uh, the hadith, he's saying that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam well, was riding with me and I was behind him on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, a horse or a donkey. And then he said, while I was behind you, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't let pass this moment, you know, without any learning or teaching, without any advice. And he advised Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala on this hadith, which is very volume, you know, like books can be written about very essential hadith when it comes to in, in the matters of faith. Very famous hadith, ulama quoted a lot, books have been written about this. He says to Abdullah ibn Abbas, Ya ulam, inni u'allimuka kalimat in ihfadillah ya'fadak, ihfadillah tajifutujahak, iza sa'alta fas'alillah, wa iza sta'anta fas'ta'in billah. وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَنْفَعُوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَكَ وَلَوْ اجْتَمَعُوا عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَوْ لَا يَضُرُّوكَ إِلَّا لَمْ يَضُرُّوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَكَ رُفِعَتِ الْأَقْدَامُ وَجَفَّتِ الصُّحُفُ Very important hadith mentioned by muhaddisin books have been written on this hadith very essential hadith in terms of faith and he's teaching the sahabi Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu who was riding behind him on his uh, donkey. And he was at the time Muhaddisin when he was only eight years old. Only eight years old. And Prophet ﷺ teaching him this hadith. Very important hadith. As I said, it's not any normal like teaching him, you know, something how to write a donkey or something. No, but very essential hadith in terms of faith. He's telling him, eight years old. One day I was riding behind the Prophet ﷺ. Prophet ﷺ told me, oh boy, I will teach you in some really important matters be watchful of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his commandments he will preserve you save god he's right he will always be with you if you beg beg from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and if you need assistance supplicate to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone for help and if you remember and you remember and remember that of all the people gathered together humankind the jinnat everything they all get together to benefit you they will not benefit you except they cannot benefit you anything except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for ordained for, ordain for you, predestined for you. And if all of them get together to harm you, they will not be able to afflict anything what, except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, pre, or predestined for you, uh, against for you. The pen, had been, the, the pen had been lifted and the inks had been dried up. Basically about Iman that nothing happened without the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to encourage the Sahaba, to motivate them, to show them, you know, to, to train them, he met very, very young Sahaba, very, at very young age, uh, the leaders of the armies, an army in which big Sahaba were participating. For instance, he met Usama ibn Zayd radiallahu ta'ala, the leader of the army in which Abu Bakr Siddiq was there, Umar ibn Khattab was there, big Sahaba was there, but Usama ibn Zayd radiallahu ta'ala was the leader. He was leading the Jaysh. And he was only, according to Muhaddisin, 16 years old. And then after the Fatha Mecca, after they entered, uh, you know, they uh, entered Mecca, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made the Amir, the governor of Mecca, Asayid bin Asayid, Atta bin Asayid radiallahu ta'ala an, they say Sahaba, the, uh, the story in Mishnah, very a lot of people know many people know about the sahabi very young only 20 years old prophet sallallahu made him the governor of mecca the big city where the holy kaaba is the, the most holiest city in, and in the time of rasulullah when there was a lot of other sahaba he made this sahabi who was very unknown to people he made him the governor of mecca to take care of the issues of mecca to show the sahaba to show them the importance to and to encourage the sahaba the youth of his time and then not only that, he taught the companion, the moderation in deen, where he said the, the famous hadith, the Sahaba came to three young Sahaba came to Azwaj al Mutaharat, and they asked them how Prophet sallallahu lived, and they mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu does such a, you know, such and such, you know, like he worships and he uh, fasts and he does that. So they said, you know, three of them, one of them said, I will fast one day, the other one said, you know, I'll perform uh, rakat all night, perform the hajj, the other one said, I will not get married. So there were three young people, you know, so the Prophet ﷺ came back and he, he, he taught them moderation in the end. You know, like, you, can, you do not have to kill yourself. So he came and he said, I'm the Prophet of Allah, I'm the most fearful of you. In the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I fast, and I break my fast, I worship, and then I uh, get married. And then there's another 
the story of Abdullah ibn Umar ta'ala when he got married and he was going to his wife and the whole night he was worshipping and fasting all day, you know. So the Prophet told him the same thing, he advised him that fast, but fast one day, fast three days only in the month. And then maybe read one Quran in the whole month, but he insisted, the Prophet then said, you know, maybe every other day you should fast and then recite one Quran weekly. And then the Prophet encouraged them in his sport. Not only that, but he encouraged them in his sport. And not only encouraging and cheering up for them, but he also participated in a lot of uh, occasions with them. There is a hadith mentioned that the, the Sahaba were playing, you know, uh, throwing uh, uh, arrows. So the Prophet passed by and then he came and he was very happy and he started cheering them, you know, do this. And then he told one of the people, some of the people, uh, uh, one of the group of the people that those who were playing, he told them, I'm with you. And he encouraged them and he told, he told them, your parents and your grandparents were very good at it. So play good. And then he said, cheering for one of the groups, he said, I'm with you. Play good and I'm with you. So the other side, they were smart.